everybody, welcome to Dance Puppy, your source for Afro-Cuban percussion as well as how to dance this music, etc. Thank you again for joining us for another chapter on, uh, in this case, this instrument, the bongo. This is the video number two on the bongo. And today in this video, I'm going to be showing you a couple of variations uh, that the bongo cero can play when he or she is actually playing the skins. Um, so I'm, I'm going to assume and bypass uh, the fact that uh, you may not know how to play this instrument at all. If you never played this instrument at all, please refer to the first video on bongo, uh, also in this uh, collection, for lack of a better word. So I'm going to place the bongo in the same way as I told you in the previous video. I'm going to rest it in my calf like that. I'm going to press it tight so it doesn't wiggle, it doesn't move a lot. And I'm going to first reintroduce you to the regular martillo and then explain to you very in detail a couple of variations that we can do on that instrument, on that, uh, that rhythm. So here's the basic martillo or a basic song pattern for the bongo. One and two and one, two, three, as seen. So now we're going to analyze this very slowly, but understand that now my pattern has become a two bar phrase. So I'm cycling my rhythm in two counts of 4-4. Four, four. So the first one is going to be, well, depends where I am in the club, if it's going to be the first one or the second one, but we, we'll, we'll go to that layer of the onion in a second. But for right now, understand this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and done. Very slow, very slow, all right? What it used to be, the regular martillo, one and two and three and four. Now when I got to that four, I'm gonna go four and one on the next bar. Okay, so here we go. One and two and three and four and one. What is this sound here? I showed you in the previous video. Four and rest on my leg. Four and one. Four and one. Nice solid open on one. So here comes the tricky part. When I'm done with this one, I can't put the pickup of my thumb and continue with my high note because I would be flipping the rhythm around. And I already played one. Four and one. Therefore, I'm going to continue with my touch, with my front touch, and I'm going to go four and one and front touch and two and three and done. I'm done. And then I start the cycle again. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and low, high, low. That's important because if I do this, then I'm going to end up with the high note on beat two. And remember that high note needs to be in one and three. That means that I'm going to flip my martillo around. So remember, in all these Afro Cuban instruments, never sacrifice your groove and coming back on time for a variation. So if you play a variation, you need to come back in time and know what's going on and feel it, feel the variation within the cycle of the regular basic pattern, okay? So I'm going to play straight for a second and then I'm going to bring the variation in and then you're going to hear the, the change. X. 
excellent. You saw me coming in and out of that already at a little bit more of a brisk tempo. So let's talk about this, this variation and the clave. I'm putting this variation, the four and one, to end up in the one on the two side of the clave. So remember that this most of this rhythm that is going to be, this music that is going to be accompanying this, this rhythm is played with regular song clave, not rumba clave. There is a chapter for, for the clave on, on this series too. Refer to that if you need further explanation. But basically, I'm playing over this pattern. And I'm going to put my pupaku to end up here. Pupaku. Upaku, upaku. So basically, I'm putting it at the very end of the three side of the clave, eh? hitting on the three side of the clave of song clave. Pa, 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 pa. Disclaimer, I always like to give disclaimers. There are some players who like to put it on the other side of the clave. And there are some players that within the same song, within the playing of the song, may put that accent sometimes in the three side, sometimes in the two side. So I don't think there is any rules or regulations in the American Constitution that forces you to play this in any particular side of the clave. Go out there, play it, listen to a lot, and have fun with it. Let me give you a couple of variations within this variation, hmm? and then we're going to play this with a little bit of music, pre-recorded music. <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, if before I had four and one, right? Now I'm going to take that four out, and it's going to sound just like this. And one. Listen. One and two and three and four. I'm playing regular, right? I play the variation as it previously was. One and two and three and four and one. Right? One and two and three and four and one. Now I'm gonna take four out. One and two and three and four. I'm just simply ghosting it. To keep myself in place, but my accents now are gonna be instead of it's just simply and one. Let's uh, let's play them a, a little bit more of a, a tempo, and then you're gonna hear the, the the feel of both of them. Another little frill in there. I don't want to break that down, that one down, but I want to give you a concept. That new variation or golpe, the pacon or the pompacon, it gives me an anchor place from which I can depart, put some other variations, and end up on that paco. So if I'm listening to that clave, the paco, to paco. Paco, paco, cu, 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 paco. Hmm? So I can use that pretty much in a way, without opening a whole other can of worms in here, in a way as a quinto player in the quinto. In styles like rumba, etc., 
will use some patterns as an anchorage to leave, have fun, do a whole bunch of variations, and then come back to what we call a quinto ride or a pattern in which I ride over in order to remain myself in clave. So I'm using that pacum, 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 and I think about the space in between as a little tunnel. I have some room to get out and what, how I'm going to get out with the same pacum that I came in the tunnel. Pacum, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, pacum, I'm out. So, warning for the bongo players who are becoming intermediate and then they start getting all these licks and variations. Remember that the bongo is a timekeeper instrument with some liberties. It's without a doubt one of the most fun, fun instruments to play because you get a chance to do a lot of variations in a salsa band while everybody's holding time. But don't forget that you need to come back to your martillo or hammer. You cannot continue just in a variation and never coming back to your basic pattern. It's a common mistake, in my opinion, and my, it's just my humble opinion, to forget that you need to help carrying the groove when you're playing in the martillo and not just to play variations and all of a sudden you, it sounds like you never stop playing a solo during the whole song. So you play in and out, you play in between the lines of the lead vocalist, you use your flavor, your, your capacity to choose spots, spots between the melody. Uh, so uh, let's do these uh, variations that we did with a little bit of accompanying music. I want to thank again in this video uh, the application Salsa Rhythm, which is the application that I'm using to back me up. And please notice that in this application I selected out, which is one of the great features of this application, I selected out uh, the campana because if I'm playing bongo, I'm not going to be hearing or playing the campana because the campana is played by the bongo player. And we're going to see that on the upcoming video shortly. Um, also, I put the conga drummer playing in only one conga drum instead of two because theoretically the conguero, as I explained to you when I was teaching you how to play congas and two drums in the son music or son bass music, you were going to open up to the low drum when in the section where the bongo player picks up the bell. So all this is related uh, and I'm trying to, to, to stick to that. So um, check it out. I'm gonna play first simple, right? And then add the variation. The other clave.
Ok. I hate to have to stop it, but um, the producer has indicated to me that it's time for us to move on so these videos can get a lot more playing when there are about 15 to 20 minutes. I hope you had a fantastic time on this. Please check us out at musicandela.com. That's my website. Uh, it's probably on the screen right as I say this. And um, what else I want to tell you? The next video is going to be on the other instrument that this bongo cero or bongo player plays, which is a main instrument in Afro-Cuban song derived music, or we know as salsa, guaracha, mambo, which is the campana. So stay in tune for the campana video coming right up. Thank you. Thank you.